Thank you very much. Let's take our seats. <clears throat> Mr. Deputy President, Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Speakers of the two Houses of Parliament, Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, and High Commissioners, CDF and Service Commanders, Ministers, Excellency Governors, Deputy Governors, Principal Secretaries, the Governor of this great county of Bungoma, Governor Kenneth Makelo Lusaka Kufuela, MCS and the Speaker of Bungoma County, Ndugu Wananchi wa Bungoma Hamjambo, Bungoma Hamjambo, Bungoma Hoye, Bungoma Hoye, Madaraka Hoye, Asanteni San. It is a great honor for me to join you here at this stadium named to honor the memory of one of Kenya's finest sons, illustrious freedom fighter and exemplary leader, Masinde Muliro, and to lead Kenya in celebrating the 61st Madaraka Day. On this anniversary, we mark the emphatic success of our freedom struggle, the triumph of the many gallant men and women who made immense sacrifice for the cause of freedom and justice and the vindication of the principles and values which inspire the people of Kenya to stand as one, resist oppression, and unite to claim their sovereignty and to win the freedom to build a nation in accordance with our own aspirations. The reason for making this day are principally that the aspirations which motivated our heroes over six decades ago are not only alive today, but they are also the bright flame that sets our souls and minds alight with ambition and urgency and illuminate the path to each one of us to pursue the progress and prosperity of our households, our families, and our nation. Madaraka, our self-governing mandate, is not an accident of history. Rather, it is the affirmation of the timeless values embraced and articulated by those who came before us in their resistance to colonial invasion and the culmination of the vision and passion of the succeeding generations which bravely took on mighty empires and they won. Today, we are no longer at the starting blocks of the race to progress. We have come a long way. In the course of our journey, we have made Kenya a strong state, anchored by a people united by fierce patriotism, love for one another, a shared vision of progress, and a public service with a high capacity to coordinate development and to provide security. Additionally, our country is a thriving, competitive, and diversified economy well into its transformational takeoff and a democracy which protects freedom, drives democracy, and places the people of Kenya at the front and center as the authors and beneficiaries of this great nation's affairs. Therefore, every person in this country has the freedom and opportunity to make their contribution by giving their best in what they do. This is the source of our glory. Madaraka recognizes that Kenya's freedom was won by resolute farmers and determined workers on their shambas and their brave sons and daughters in forests, cities, factories, and plantations. Madaraka reminds us not to look down upon the labors of others, regardless of their occupation, because work makes a great people and a strong nation. Rather, Madaraka encourages us to do whatever we must 
to honor and support everyone who works because that is the best way of achieving prosperity and security in a nation. Madaraka Day celebrates the birth of a nation out of the totality of the labors of millions of its people. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is the day to remember that work is important. Every hustle matters and that nation building is a bottom-up affair. Let no one look down upon the life or livelihoods of another and let no one be made to feel despised because of their work. Our economy depends on every form of service and labor. From the milling of sugar cane, millet and sorghum, to the ginning of got cotton and the roasting of coffee beans in this country, our agriculture sector continues to fire the powerful engine of economic transformation to propel this great nation into a food secure, internationally competitive trading giant that can hold its own in the East African community and leverage other trading frameworks, such as the COMESA, Africa Growth and Opportunities Act, the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, with ease, agriculture remains sufficiently attractive enough to sustain investment in every node of the food system. Agriculture's direct contribution to our GDP is 25%, while its indirect support to other economic pillars such as manufacturing boosts the GDP by a further 27%. Agriculture also employs directly or otherwise an estimated 40% of our population. To build a robust and thriving economy, enhance social inclusion and improve environmental conservation on this critical sector, the government has deployed an agriculture-led, all-of-society approach in the form of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda of which agriculture is a critical, central, strategic pillar. Under the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, we will reduce hunger, fight poverty, and improve the health outcomes of Kenyans. I am particularly delighted that agriculture and food security are the chosen theme of this year's celebration in this great agricultural county of Bungoma. We appreciate the determination of small-scale farmers who are the backbone of Kenya's agricultural sector in their efforts to produce sufficient and varied food to meet their national health and other daily needs. Against many odds, our farmers have defied systemic and structural constraints and limitations to make a contribution to households and national food security requirements and to propel the economy into the future. We need, we understand, we cherish, and we value our farmers. Consequently, we have partnered effectively with farmers and other food system value chain actors, such as input suppliers, producers, processors, and support service providers to transform their productivity beyond subsistence and enhance the country's food security. This has been made possible through interventions in key value chains like maize, livestock, tea, coffee, edible oils, cashew nuts, pyrethrum, flowers, avocado, and macadamia nuts. We now have the potential to become a competitive regionally, globally, by utilizing the unique capacity of cooperatives to mobilize production on scale through the provision of government-supported agricultural extension services. The sugar industry is a highly strategic subsector whose value chains have been the mainstay of the local economies of our sugar belt and a generator of much needed jobs and value. For this reason, we are firmly committed to ensure that the sugar industry returns maximum value to all actors in its value chains, beginning with the initial and foundational entrepreneur, the cane grower. 
To accomplish this, we have implemented a number of radical measures. We have written off Kenya Shillings 110 billion worth of sugar factories debts accumulated over the last 40 years. A new leasing model that will guarantee prompt payment for cane deliveries by farmers, timely wages for factory workers, and a bonus to sugarcane farmers every end of the year, like other groups, is underway. I call upon relevant agencies to accelerate the review process and to incorporate proceeds from byproducts in the scheme. As part of our commitment to invest 2 billion shillings into sugarcane development through state-owned mills, after leasing is completed, I am proud to announce that the government has approved the first tranche of 600 million for seed cane development, and the National Treasury shall shortly release these funds to farmers. Recently, smallholder tea farmers exported Ketepa's value-added teas to West Africa and China. The government also increased farm-to-table food safety through frameworks such as the Food Safety Policy and a Food Safety Coordination Bill is underway. To ensure our capacity to coordinate agricultural production and deliver service to the sector more efficiently, we are developing and integrating a farmers and agripreneurs database into the Kenya Integrated Agriculture Information System. As we speak, the database already has 6.4 million registered farmers, and our aim is to serve them better by improving access, sharing, and utilizing of information in the agricultural sector. We have just witnessed a cohort of 2,000 agripreneurs trained by the government of Kenya. There are 18,000 agripreneurs around the country whom we have commissioned today to take charge of our agriculture across Kenya. The power of the database is beyond doubt. In recent months, farmers have been able to access subsidized fertilizer from the fertilizer subsidy program, as well as animal feed and certified seed more efficiently, more affordably, and more transparently. Since we began to distribute subsidized fertilizer last year, 15 million bags of 50 kilograms of crop and soil specific fertilizers have been distributed. Our strategic intervention have led to a marked increase of value addition initiative. Measures are underway to boost coffee productivity from two kilograms to 10 kilograms per tree and from 50,000 metric tons to 102 metric tons a year by 2027. Under the coffee sector reform that we initiated, a 4 billion coffee jerry fund was established, 2 billion of which has been paid with a balance allocated for payment in the 2024-2025 financial year. This will ensure farmers get good returns for their investments. We are also writing off Kenya shilling 6.7 billion debt owed by coffee cooperatives around Kenya. And specifically, in this write-off, Bungoma County, the cooperatives in Bungoma County, 300 million shillings will be written off for cooperatives in Bungoma County. In the edible oils value chain, the government's plan involves boosting the production of sunflower, palm oil, and canola by, by working with counties. In 2023, 70, 70 tons of sunflower seeds were purchased with 40 tons distributed to farmers. Another 40 tons of seed have been allocated to the Agricultural Development Corporation for seed multiplication. Additionally, the government through the Agriculture and Food Authority has produced and distributed 500 metric tons of seeds worth 241 million to farmers in 24 counties, including those in this region, as seed cotton production is underway.
In the financial year 2024-2025, Kenya shillings 400 million has been budgeted for this program under the National Edible Oils Program project. We are on course with our plan to increase cotton production from 2,500 bales in 2022 to 107,000 bales by 2025 and modernize all gineries around Kenya. The aim is to expand cotton farming from 9,300 acres in 2022 to 41,000 acres in 2023, distributing 15,700 kilos of seed to farmers in Busia and another 20,000 kilos to farmers in Meru, Makueni, Kitui, and Machakos among the 24 counties that are in our program. Subsidized fertilizer will also be provided through the tried and tested e forger for both our sugarcane and cotton farmers as well. Additionally, 5,000 hectares have been harvested in Lamu of cotton. The government has also worked with stakeholders to negotiate a price increase for farmers from Kenya shillings 54 shillings a kilo to Kenya shillings 72 shillings a kilo. In the 2024-2025 financial year, 150 million has been allocated for the cotton industry revitalization program. We have also witnessed the negative effects of climate change, most notably through extreme climatic phenomena. Last year, a long bitter drought ended, giving way to a spell of vicious storms and devastating floods. It is now clear to us that climate change presents serious challenges to food security and economic recovery. The flooding, mudslides, and landslides that the country has experienced in the past six months may have slowed us a, a little. However, the effects of global warming have not killed our resolve to become food secure and grow economically. Instead, climate-related risks and hazards have threatened our, deter our, have threatened our determination to increase investment in climate action and to build resilience against disruptive forces of nature. The government will continue to champion afforestation and the restoration of degraded landscapes and mobilize Kenyans to plant trees throughout the Republic to restore the environment and our bi biodiversity. We encourage increased use of climate smart technologies such as mobile grain dryers, mobile soil assessment laboratories, and of course, an expanded irrigation infrastructure. We have made progress towards fulfilling our commitment to build 100 dams and 1,000 small dams in different parts of the country to facilitate sustainable water use and increase irrigated land by 500,000 acres by 2026. The government of Kenya is in discussion with the Africa Development Bank and other multilateral institutions to implement this expanded dam program. To control livestock diseases and pests, ladies and gentlemen, the Kenya Veterinary Vaccine Production Institute, Kevevapi, produced 35 million doses of assorted livestock vaccines in 2023. To bring young people into farming, we have revitalized the 4K and Young Farmers Clubs to interest and introduce our children to agriculture. This administration has also invested more than 2.2 billion in the promotion and financing of agribusiness entrepreneurs and supported initiatives such as incubation and project management that will be undertaken across Kenya and farmers will be trained along the way. On this 61st Madaraka Day, ladies and gentlemen, we join the people of Bungoma and Kenyans of goodwill and friends of Kenya to acknowledge the contribution that food chain value actors have made towards the country's food, nutritional, and economic needs. The food value chain actors who exhibited their goods and services in the run-up to this celebration include outstanding individuals 
input suppliers and service providers, farmer producer organizations and cooperative societies, other service providers in digitally enabled agriculture, financial institutions supporting agribusiness, research institutions, food processing entities, ambassadors of our development partners and insurance companies which have helped us strengthen the bottom up over the last 12 months. Kenya's farmers have made remarkable progress in their efforts to make safe, nutritious and sufficient food available to every citizen all year round. Since December 2023, through collective efforts and determination to increase household food stocks and improve food production, we have stabilized the country's food security situation. Ladies and gentlemen, arid and semi-arid lands cover over 80% of Kenya and hold about 60% of our livestock population. Approximately 14.6 million Kenyans who live in Assals derive their livelihoods primarily from livestock sector, which contributes 12% to the country's GDP and employs 50% of agricultural labor force. Assals and the livestock to the nation's food security and economy. To actualize the bottom-up economic transformation agenda in relation to the livestock sector, the government is focusing on commercializing and reforming the sector and improving livestock performance. Our commercialization agenda has given priority to leather, dairy, and red meat value chains under projects like the Livestock Commercialization Project, which supports 110,000 vulnerable youth and women-led livestock-dependent households in 10 counties around Kenya. The project has developed solar-powered boreholes and water pumps, rehabilitated several livestock markets and slaughterhouses, bred thousands of animals, provided agricultural equipment pasture and water seeds and trained the youth in animal health in different parts and many counties in the Republic of Kenya. We are invested in developing our leather subsector to support competitive export industries supporting many thriving enterprises and households. In this connection, we have committed to implement strategies aimed at increasing incomes from 15 billion to 120 billion a year, multiplying job opportunities from 17,000 to 100,000 and raising annual footwear pro production from the current 8 million shoes to 36 million pairs, worth 72 billion by 2027. I have made this commitment that shortly we will not be importing shoes from anywhere we will be wearing our own shoes, made in Kenya, using our own leather. It is essential to our strategy that we transform the leather value chain from one driven by exports of raw material and semi-processed products to a sophisticated industry manufacturing internationally competitive finished leather and leather products, thus mopping up all the three million hides and 18 million skins produced every year. We are developing local capacity to handle hides and skins to provide quality raw material, turning as well as the local manufacturing of finished leather goods such as shoes, bags, belts, and others. Financially, our commitments are as follows. Kenya Shillings 400 million has been allocated to upgrade the Ewaso Nero South Development Authority's leather factory. 200 million of the funds will be used to acquire modern equipment. Kenya Shillings 100 million to build a footwear factory and Kenya Shillings 100 million to mop up hides and skins in different counties. Machinery for increasing processing capacity at factory has already been procured and installed. To supply quality hides and skins, 700 players have been trained 
and subsidized flaying equipment provided to 680 slaughter points around the country. At the same time, construction of the Kenya Leather Industrial Park at Kenani and Machakos County is 80%, 85% complete. This park will have a common affluent treatment plant, two tanneries, two leather manufacturing plants, and 100 acres for investors to set up leather factories by the end of this year. In the dairy sector, we are committed to enhancing annual milk production from 5.1 billion liters to 10 billion liters by 2027, raising the market share of processed and formally marketed milk from 30% to 50%. This will lead to an, in to an increase of processed uh, milk exports of 1 billion liters a year by 2027. The value of processed milk increased by 7.5% from 755 million liters in 2022 to 812 million liters in 2023. Kenya shilling 600 million was released last week to new KCC to pay farmers promptly as part of the build-up of the Milk Revolving Fund, which is estimated to be 3 billion shillings by the end of this financial year. The government's six-point plan for the dairy industry covers, among others, installing milk coolers in dairy cooperatives, providing tax incentives, reducing trade barriers, and establishing a dairy stabilization revolving fund to manage milk surpluses and deficits and prompting higher national milk consumption to improve health, especially the growth and development of our children. The government's intervention in the red meat value chain are similarly robust and have led to an increase of 8.6% in meat exports from 15,000 metric tons valued at 9 billion in 2022 to 16,000 metric tons valued at 10 billion this year. There has also been a 42% growth in the export of live animals from 33,000 animals in 2022 to 47,000 animals in 2023. The government will build 450 fence feedlots in 31 counties, working with counties to increase annual red meat production by an additional 110,000 metric tons, valued at 54 billion by the end of this year. To sustain high livestock performance, several interventions have been undertaken with the aim of improving genetics, eliminating feed water supply constraints, disease and barriers to market access. Key actions include the implementation of a countrywide breed improvement program in collaboration with counties to upgrade dairy and beef breeds across Kenya. In 2023, the Kenya Animal Genetics Resource Center provided farmers with 900,000 doses of bull semen with the aim of increasing production and productivity. I have directed that the cost of sex semen be brought down from Kenya shillings 8,000 to Kenya shillings 3,000, which will enable dairy farmers increase their production and productivity of milk. Likewise, a goat artificial insemination station and animal husbandry and industry training institute in Domba, Kirinyaga County has produced 48,000 doses of goat semen and trained 80 goat inseminators. Veterinary services are essential to safeguard animal and human health, improve animal welfare and productivity, and ensure the production of safe, highly high quality animals, and thus promote food security and domestic as well as international trade. I want our livestock farmers to work with confidence and rest assured of consistent, reliable, and efficient provision of vaccines. In 2023,
the modernized Kenya Veterinary Vaccine Production Institute produced 35 million doses of assorted livestock vaccines. To enhance livestock disease and pest management, the government is launching a national vaccination program to eradicate the PPR disease and control the foot and mouth disease. I want to ask all counties, because we are going to provide the vaccines. Under this program, more than 22 million cattle will be vaccinated against foot and mouth disease, while 50 million goats will be vaccinated through a collaborative nationwide exercise undertaken by government, partners, and our counties. Ladies and gentlemen, the government will provide vaccines and facilitate vaccination while county, county governments will provide the logistical support and human resource. 1,500 veterinary surgeons and 6,000 animal health assistants will provide health and husbandry services to our farmers in a collaborative effort between the national and the county government. To facilitate the holistic development of the livestock sector and anchor all our value chains in a sustainable strategic platform, the government is implementing several policies and legislative for, uh, reforms and improvements to transform the livestock sector, guide training institutions, and provide a predictable environment to attract investment across all these sectors. These frameworks include the veterinary policy, livestock policy, livestock bill, livestock master plan, food safety policy, and food safety coordination bill. All these are at, an, at various stages of consideration by cabinet and parliament. To guarantee sustainable availability of well-trained, highly skilled, and knowledgeable workforce needed by the sector, 1,700 students were enrolled in various livestock training institutions in 2023 to study animal health and husbandry, leather technology, dairy technology, and meat inspection. Similarly, our support for productivity in the livestock sector extends to fisheries, aquaculture, and the blue economy. We have established 11 new landing sites in the coastal region and financed the operation of pit management units in Shimoni and Liwatoni, which have been equipped with commercial fishing boats. Have been equipped with commercial fishing boats. We have done the same in the Lake Victoria region, where 11 fish landing sites have been established at various points on the shores of Lake Victoria and beach management units set up and equipped with fishing boats. In addition, we are setting up two hatcheries, one in Cabonio to restore Lake Victoria and another in Shimoni to serve the Indian Ocean. Agriculture, ladies and gentlemen, is the engine of our economy. It strongly complements manufacturing, export trade, and the micro, small, and medium enterprises, and directly supports our health agenda. The bottom-up economic transformation of Kenya requires us to mobilize with urgency and pursue intentional undertakings to catalyze and sustain a revolution in our chambers that will reverberate in our urban areas, towns, and cities. To accomplish this, we have committed to implement strong interventions on three different points, all aimed at promoting a robust bottom-up economic resurgence. As already discussed, we have made a defining choice with our commitment to discontinue wasteful consumption subsidies and instead invest in supporting production. The second fundamental intervention was to enhance national revenue mobilization, engaging more eligible taxpayers and ensuring that due revenues are collected. It is critical to emphasize that the resolve to reinvigorate tax revenue mobilization was accompanied by an implicit and explicit undertaking that the government would not compromise on its responsibility to steward public resources 
with utmost prudence, transparency, and accountability. This commitment, fellow Kenyans, is irrevocable. We must live within our means by raising our own revenue and spending it carefully and wisely. Every officer in the public service, starting with me, shall be held to full account for all resources under their authority. The third critical strategic decision was to invest intensively in agriculture and food security, together with other pillars of our bottom-up economic transformation agenda in order to stimulate growth in the productivity of our farmlands and rural economies. But having done so, it is necessary for us to enhance market access for our produce and products locally, regionally, and internationally. To enhance access to credit by farmers in the next financial year, we are allocating Kenya shillings one billion to the Agricultural Finance Corporation to provide affordable credit to farmers. Additionally, we are collaborating with the AFRIEXIM Bank to provide another Kenya shillings 15 billion to AFC to support increased lending to our farmers in all the sectors that we are engaged in. The Indian Exim Bank will also support AFC to enhance our agricultural mechanization agenda, providing farm inputs to farmers at low rates and making sure that we use appropriate mechanization mechanisms. I want the people of Kenya to understand that our advocacy of integration is part of our traditional commitment to regional cohesion and solidarity. The Pan-African imperative and the expansion of market access and linkages with the trade investment counterparts for our producers beyond our borders is absolutely necessary. I stand here, therefore, to urge our farmers and other agriculture sector entrepreneurs to work with renewed confidence, with the assurance that the fruits of their labor will meet demand in Kenya, East Africa, common markets of Eastern and Southern Africa and the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Further abroad, we have secured quota-free and duty-free access to the 27-country European market for produce exports from Kenya farmers under the Economic Partnership Agreement signed between Kenya and the EU and recently ratified by Kenya and two days ago ratified by, by the European Parliament. I also wish to report that during my recent visit to the US, we negotiated the renewal of the African Growth and Opportunities Act, an instrument which has enhanced access to the U.S. market for African exports and catalyzed the rapid growth of Kenyan exports, especially in the textile and apparel sector. My call similarly applies to Kenyans from all walks of life. Let us keep working hard, embrace border visions and dream more ambitious dreams to take the tide of freedom up economic transformation that can sweep us all into our collective destiny of shared prosperity. Let me conclude by saying two final things. This stadium that was, has been built for the last five years or so, and the, all that space was not done. I want to commit to the people of Bungoma that the contractor will not leave site. And that the people in charge, especially the military officers in charge, will be here until this stadium is completed and made available for the people of this county and for Kenyans. I know that there is plenty of sun elsewhere. I just want to promise you that this will be the last time that you will be beaten by the sun. The next time you come to this stadium, this whole stadium will be covered properly. 
But let me also ask the people around this stadium, especially those who have decided to acquire some of the public land, please, kidogo. Kila mtu mwenye ako na shamba hapa ambayo anajua ni ya serikali pole pole funga virago yako ondoka tutajenga hii mahali yote ikae nzuri. Atutaki kusukumana na mtu atutaki vita na mtu tunataka tuheshimiane kwa sababu mali ya umma ni mali ya wananchi wote wa Kenya. Pia pale katika matulo Tumejenga pale airport mpya. Matatizo kidogo ni kwamba hatuna ardhi ya kutosha. Nimekubaliana na Governor Lusaka ya kwamba yeye atanunua ardhi na mimi na serikali kuu tutaongeza runway na kujenga terminal. Na nilisema jana ya kwamba hamtakuwa na haja tena ya kuja Eldoret ama kwenda Kisumu kutafuta ndege ndege yenu mtakutana nayo hapa webuye hapo Matulo <laughs> Lakini wale muko na det kule Eldoret ama kule Kisumu mnaweza kuja Lakini ndege mtapata hapa <laughs> Ya tatu Mumesikia vile nimesema kuhusu mambo ya kilimo ya sukari ama ya miwa. Kuna jamaa mmoja hapa amesema tumefurahi mambo ya miwa ndio tumekuita ndio tumekuita mweshi miwa. Hiyo ni sawa. Lakini mambo ya miwa tumeshakamilisha maneno ya Mumias. Sasa Mumias tuko na taratibu ya sawa sawa ya leasing pale mumias hapa zoya kule soni kule miwani kule chemelil kule muhoroni mimi nataka niwahakikishie tunakamilisha mpango yetu vile nimetangaza katika hafla hii na kutakuwa na mambo matatu ya muhimu ya kwanza nimesema mkulima atalipwa kwa muda ama kwa Eh, aki, akipeleka miwa yake arudi nyumbani na pesa yake ya pili wafanyikazi watalipwa na ya tatu vile tunalipa bonus kwa chai katika hii mpango yetu mpya tunataka tulipe bonus kwa wakulima wa miwa hiyo ndio mpango tumeweka na mimi nataka niwahakikishie hiyo mpango tutatekeleza na tutakamilisha. Mwisho kabisa. Wacha niwashukuru watu wa Bungoma Jameni. Sisi tulikuja hapa 2022. Mimi naibu wangu Rigji na viongozi wote tukakuja hapa tukaomba kura zenu. Nyingi mkawa watu wa ngwana ajabu bila ya kujali ni jamii gani tulitoka Mulitu, mulitupatia kura asilimia 65% 65% of the vote in Bungoma county ilikuja kwetu nyinyi mulisimama kidete kwa sababu wakati huo tulikuwa tunauziwa uoga tulikuwa tunauziwa ya kwamba system ndio itaamua sijui deep state ndio itaamua lakini wa Kenya 2022 walisimama bega kwa bega na kura tuliyopiga 2022 it was a defining election hiyo kura ya mwaka wa elfu mbili na mbili ilifanya mambo matatu ya muhimu ya kwanza ili tusaidia tumalize siasa ya ukabila katika taifa letu la Kenya jambo la pili ilitoa mwongozo kwamba sio system sio serikali sio deep state ndio inaamua wananchi wa Kenya ndio wenye kuamua na jambo la tatu wa Kenya walipiga kura kwa sera 
hawakupiga kura kwa mtu binafsi ama kwa mambo ya personality wananchi walisema tuuzie sera yako na ndio sababu hiyo tunafuatilia kukamilisha mkataba tulipata kati yenu na sisi wakati tuliomba kura yenu and going into the future i want to promise the people of kenya that we will not let you down we will never go back to the politics of ethnicity we will never go back to the politics of personalities we will never go back to the politics that people are not in the center i want to assure you that we will work hard to make sure that our politics is focused on an agenda of developing kenya that we are going to make sure that we deal with the challenge of corruption wasteful spending and unnecessary this uh, unnecessary use of public resources we are going to ensure that we drive the agenda of kenya in the manner that will benefit all regions and every part and every kenyan the same way mimi nataka niwahakikishie ndugu zangu wa kenya siasa ya ukabila tutazika katika kaburi la sahau siasa ya mambo ya wizi tutakabiliana na wale wote ambao wanatumia pesa ya umma kwa njia isiyofaa ama njia ya ufisadi na tutahakikisha ya, ya kwamba tunaunganisha taifa letu la Kenya kila mkenya mahali popote alipo ajivunie ya kwamba taifa hii ni taifa letu i promise not to let you down this administration will let you down will not let you down we are going to work together we are going to build a huge collaboration of all sectors so that we can transform our country and make Kenya a great respected prosperous country that we all love watu wa bungoma wacha mimi nichukue nafasi hii niwashukuru tena niwaambia asante sana kwa kutukaribisha hapa bungoma bado tuko area tutakuwa hapa kesho mkituchunga vizuri tutakuwa hapa kesho kutwa mkituangalia vizuri pengine tutakuwa hapa wiki nzima sasa bidii ni yenu so bungoma asanteni sana tunawapenda sana Mungu awabariki Nyasai ya Mulinde God bless you and God bless our great country Kenya Thank you very much Asanteni kwa heshima naomba sote tusimame kwa wimbo